All right, so welcome back to another episode of our Discord dashboard series. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and set up our database, okay? Uh, before I do that, though, I just want to do one quick thing. So I actually initialize this repository or this folder with git, and I just want to quickly create a git ignore before I forget. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply uh, do that. Uh, now, typically, I would suggest, uh, honestly, I probably should have never made it so it was dependent on the token for slappy.json, but uh, I would obviously uh, encourage you to not commit this slappy.json file um, to, the, uh, to the actual remote repository, okay? So I would suggest adding this to the .env file, but, um, wait, whoops, what am I doing? Yeah, so I would avoid adding that. Actually, let me do one quick thing. Uh, I probably should have never done this when I was modifying Slappy, when I was updating it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the .env package. Uh, cause I, I really don't want to commit the bot token cause I don't want you guys to also do it as well, or you all to do it as well. I want, um, I want to only encourage good practices. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead. Uh, let me see. Let me import or should be actually, I don't even do that. Let me go ahead and do this require.env. There's a config function that you call. And what this will do is it'll load up all of the environment variables from the .env file. So you need to make sure that this is in the root folder. So outside of a source, inside the Discord bot v13 folder. And instead of just putting the bot token inside here, um, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, and I think the prefix, we could honestly leave the prefix alone. Um, but yeah, actually, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, let me get rid of that, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll do Discord. Uh, I'll just do uh, DJS bot token, and I'll just paste the token in there. So let me actually go ahead and grab my token again. Okay, paste that there. So now, what we can do is we can actually, instead of referencing config.token, what we can do is we can do process.env.token, or actually not token, sorry, uh, DJS bot token. So this should log the bot in because we're using an environment variable instead. Yeah, so I just don't want to commit the token to the actual repository. I think that's kind of dumb. Um, excuse me. But um, I think it'd be better if we just got rid of that and just added .env. Ultimately, if I did it, you all would do it as well. And I don't want to encourage bad practices. So yeah, that's the reason why I'm doing this extra step. So my apologies, but let's go ahead and uh, get started with the actual real um, intention of this project or this, this episode. And that is to actually set up uh, a database. So let me go ahead and just do this. There we go. All right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and set up our database right now. All I just have to do is just, I just committed. So that way, in case if anything goes wrong, we're going to revert back to the previous commit. But we're going to set up a database. Okay. Now, uh, before you get started, make sure you have. Uh, a database like MySQL installed. You can you don't need to use MySQL. You can actually use uh, PostgreSQL, or you can use uh, any uh, SQL SQL database. Okay. Uh, ultimately, I would recommend MySQL to avoid any uh, differences between my code or or my application and your application. Um, but yeah, make sure you install MySQL. I actually do conveniently um, have a video on my channel that shows you how to install MySQL. Uh, it's very easy, okay? Uh, all you gotta do is just go to the MySQL website. You click on downloads, you click on MySQL community downloads down here. And you can just install, I would recommend installing the MySQL uh, installer for Windows, this makes it very easy to install everything. And then it'll just install all of the database stuff for you. If you don't want to install uh, the actual uh, MySQL database on your computer, you can actually use a Docker container instead. Uh, I would I would uh, recommend that 
uh, you know, that's also a good option. Um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, assuming that everyone has my SQL installed already, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a couple things. We're going to first install type RM. Okay, so that's going to be an object relational mapper library. And what this is going to do, this library, what, what these ORMs usually do is they pretty much convert, or not really convert, but they take uh, an entity or a class that represents a, a database uh, object. Like, for, for example, let's say your database has a table uh, that represents all the guild configurations. So you would encode in JavaScript, we would write a class to represent that or some kind of schema, right? And then it would pretty much the object of relational mapper library would take care of converting that into an actual representation in the in in in, in an understanding that the database can understand. Uh, so that's why these ORMs are very powerful. So we're going to install type ORM. We're going to need to install the MySQL driver. This is going to actually allow us to connect to the database. So we're going to install MySQL two, not MySQL, MySQL two. Okay, there's actually uh, been some problems with MySQL, the actual MySQL library. So the MySQL 2 is just uh, the one that I would recommend. Um, and I think that should be it. We're going to install this reflect metadata package as well. Uh, because that is what we actually need with type RM. And this is actually the official uh, website for type RM. You can easily just Google it or just go to type RM.io. And it'll tell you literally for the installation, you need to install Reflect Metadata. Uh, let's also make sure we install the types as well. Because remember, we are using TypeScript. Uh, and we will be using TypeScript for every single thing in this project. Okay. Uh, did I use NPM? Okay, good. I used Yarn. Okay, good. Let me go ahead and just add types as well. All right. Now that we have installed everything, what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and set up um, the connection to the database, okay? Before we can do that though, uh, let's just do this real quick. We got to go into our uh, our code and all the way on the top, we need to import reflect metadata right over there, okay? That's what we need to do in order for type ORM to work properly. We also then need to go into our tsconfig.json file. We need to look for the uh let's see it should be um there's two things emit decorator where is that emit decorator yep right over here so we need to go ahead and uncomment this if you don't have the default tsconfig.json which you should but uh we just need to make sure we comment this part out well why is this giving me oh yeah so you need to uncomment this make sure to set the true emit decorator metadata and then we also need to make sure experimental decorators is also enabled as well. I don't think this can be enabled without that. Yeah, that's why I was giving that linting issue. Okay. So yeah, in order for type ORM to actually work, you need to make sure you have these two uh, options enabled. Okay. Uh, now that we have that enabled, uh, we should be good to go with the actual, uh, uh, the, the basic configuration. All we got to do now is we just need to set up uh, type ORM connection. And that's going to be uh, fairly, fairly simple. So what we're going to do now is we're going to need to connect to the MySQL database. Okay. So like I said, assuming that everyone already has MySQL installed, we can go ahead and proceed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Inside this, uh, this async, this uh, iffy, this immediately invoked uh, function expression, right? We're going to go ahead and call this create connection method and this create connection method should come from the type ORM package. Okay. You saw that there was multiple different create connection functions, but make sure it's from the type ORM library. We're going to go ahead and just pass in the actual value. So this is going to be a connections options. So the type that's going to be the first property, you're going to see that it's going to allow us to specify different database types. So there are many, there's MariaDB, there's MongoDB, uh, there's uh, Oracle, so I think uh, there's also Postgre, uh, there's also SQLite too, for those who like using SQLite, we're going to use MySQL, okay? Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and set up the host, 
that's just going to be localhost if you have a remote mysql server somewhere that's hosted somewhere remotely you can use that as well for the port 3306 uh the username i should have a test user password test user one two three and again your credentials are going to be a lot different some of you might use root and that's fine as well um i think there's access denied so i'm gonna have to double check the credentials or actually no it's fine okay so um okay cool so it, it was able to successfully connect to the database which is good you can see that there's no error right now uh but we also need to make sure that it connects to the correct database uh like the correct uh yeah the correct the actual correct schema so uh we can actually create a simple database schema and that's actually what we're going to do uh right now so uh like i said assuming that you all have mysql installed what we're going to do is we're going to log into our mysql server real quick so that's how you can log into your mysql server you can just do mysql hyphen u test user or whatever the username is hyphen p type in the password and it'll bring you into the mysql shell I promise you, you probably will rarely, you, you won't really need to worry so much about the shell, but it is good uh, usage if you need to do some debugging or do some, or, you know, add some test data or look at the test data. You can also use the MySQL Workbench, which is a GUI. So if you prefer that, you can use that as well. Um, but what we're going to do here, oh, one more thing I want to mention. If you happen to have an error that says like MySQL, is not a recognized command all that means is that it's not recognized in the path so you need to make sure that you add mysql uh to to your path okay just make sure you do that so we're going to do create database uh and what we'll do is we'll call this discord dashboard okay and that will create the database for us and i can go ahead and just step into this database and show tables it's going to say empty set and what we're going to do is for the database, we're just going to specify Discord dashboard, and we shouldn't get any issues connecting to it. And like I said, if you're using a remote database, um, it would also work just fine too. Uh, if you don't want to install MySQL um, on your local machine, like I said, just use Docker. Or if you want, I would recommend you sign up for DigitalOcean. If you actually use, uh, there's actually like a $100 credit that you can use to sign up with my link. Uh, it'll allow you to, uh, you know, create a remote database that you can use. Um, and instead of like, you know, using everything on local, you can just use a remote one. And it's, I think, only about like 10 bucks a month. So if that's in your budget after the credit expires, then you can go ahead and pay for that. But um, for now, I'm assuming everyone, uh, if you, again, if you have any issues with the database connection, definitely let me know. And I'll definitely uh, spend some time on my Discord server whenever i have time and or someone will try their best to help you out okay but uh this is pretty straightforward process uh like I said, any issues just leave a comment down below and i'll be glad to help but we were able to successfully connect to the database which is good if there were any errors it would actually throw an error as you can see over here but there aren't any which is great okay now one more thing that i'm going that i would recommend and i'll probably do this for like you know the I'll probably do this later. I'll uh, I'd recommend just putting all of these inside environment variables. Now, one more thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and tidy this up a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll just put in the uh, environment variables that I want. Now, this .env file is not going to be committed to uh, GitHub, so you all need to make sure that you have uh, this yourself. Okay. Uh, so let me just go ahead and just, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll actually write a readme. So that way it's easy for people to just follow through with this. Okay. So let's change this to, so the host will be local host. Username will be test user, password, test user123. And then there we go. Yeah. I don't really like using, uh, magic strings. So I always recommend putting everything in a variable or using environment variables, which for credentials, uh, yeah, those are really what I would recommend. For the port, we're going to leave that alone because it needs to be an integer. So we'll just leave that alone for now. Uh, 
let's just do this real quick my sql db username uh, let's see there we go and then for the database we will go ahead and change that to this and that should work just fine so it should connect just fine all right so we've connected successfully to the database so what's next so what's next is we need to create a couple of entities is what it's called if you've used mongoose before uh those are in mongoose those are called schemas if you use something like sqlize i forgot what sqlize calls it but essentially you can think of entities like schemas okay we're going to basically create a couple entities and i'm going to explain to you the type of entities that we're going to be creating and how they're going to reflect in our application once we do that um you'll i'll show you in the database what actually happens what type arm actually does so that way you'll see that it will actually literally create the entity into an actual database table so we're going to call an episode here all i wanted to do was just show you all how to connect to the database i don't want to go too far again any issues with connecting or any issues with um installing my sql or connecting to the database let me know join my discord server link is in the description or leave a comment and i'll try my best to reply to as many of you and i'll see you guys uh in my next episode peace out